What's going on with the post office? Let's check and see, shall we? Somebody in trouble over there. So I got this update from Politico, right? And it says, from Congress, oversight panel set to subpoena DeJoy amid clash over postal service. Democrats say the Postmaster General's operational changes will undermine mail-in voting in the 2020 election. Okay. Here in Washington, oh, you see that? Cocoa butter. <laughs> I'm using uh, cocoa butter. Uh, hopefully that will help to get rid of all of my Amazon scars. That's the thing about Amazon. I can tell y'all, Ooh, I got bumped and nicked and cut by jiffies and boxes, those corners of the boxes and stuff. And I'm so tired until I don't even notice it. So tired. I worked there. I started out on swing shift. Then I went to, um, day shift. Uh, then I went to Graveyard, which Graveyard at Amazon is not like Graveyard any other place. I worked from 6.30 in the evening until 4.30 in the morning. I was like a zombie. And they do that to keep employees from stealing. Not that it works, but that's what they do. It's just... abuse and the people that are actually stealing try they don't care nothing about no schedule they ain't gonna stop no thief but that's what they do honey they just abuse everybody because of the criminals and it's almost like that's how our whole world works right <sighs> so a regular graveyard shift is 11 to 7 okay Amazon takes away your evening and then sends you out into these streets at 4.30 in the morning and you dog tired. So, yeah. Not good. Okay. And then I went from that to working days. Uh, 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. Anyway, uh, that, at least that was my favorite. I had three days off, 10 to 10, four days a week, and then I'm done. Right? Now, the post office, that's a whole different kerfuffle. Okay? So, they're saying that the House uh, Oversight Committee is preparing to issue a subpoena for Postmaster General Louis DeJoy. Now, the postmaster that I had a problem with is Yolanda Shaw. She's a black lady. And she's the post off, uh, postmaster for Renton. And I was supposed to be hired in February. She didn't put me into orientation until May. And then uh, I didn't get a chance to do my LLV training, which is how you drive the mail truck and stuff like that until a month later, because I was freaked out by this driving instructor that they have, uh, here in Seattle. He just gives me serial killer vibes. And so, and I don't like him. I still don't like him to this day, but I went ahead and did my training, uh, she rescheduled me for training because I just kept on asking for it. Kept on asking for it. HR was asking for it. This this woman is a, a nightmare. Okay. So, and I want to say, if you get a chance to work for the post office up here, do not, do not, do not accept any jobs in Renton, in Renton, Washington. As long as that postmaster is the same, Yolanda Shaw. You don't want to work for Yolanda Shaw. Okay, so back to what I was saying. <clears throat> That's a little helpful tip for you. Um, if the Postmaster General is watching this, the investigators, uh, y'all need to look into renting. It's something going on over there. <laughs> 
Okay, so anyway, uh, the House Oversight Committee is preparing to issue a subpoena for Postmaster General Louis DeJoy, accusing him of ignoring the panel's demand for documents related to Postal Service mail delays and contacts with White House officials or the Trump campaign. Okay, so they obviously this committee doesn't know that postal workers are under so much pressure that they throw mail away. Because the postmasters will pay, play favorites, and even though they're not supposed to, but if you survive at the post office for a long time, they give you the best routes. And then the new people who come on, they overload them with stuff. And I have seen new postal workers at my mailbox at after dark. After dark. Uh, and then I've had other tenure postal workers, Reggie, out of SeaTac. He would actually come by my house. He would go through my mail. He would come by my house and knock on the door, whoop de whoop, how you doing, blah, 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 because he got time for that. He's got time for that because he's a tenured worker and they're not, they're not distributing the routes um, fairly. They're not distrib distributing the routes fairly. So, for example, to me, if I have a new person coming on, I'm going to give them the lighter routes until they can get their feet under them, get a get a method going on. That's what I'm going to do. I am not going to take the easy routes and give it to my tenured people because they're good at this. They know this. They're experts. They've been doing this here for a long time. So they know the deal. Whereas the newbies don't know. It's going to take them 50, 11 more hours to get the job done than one of my more tenured people will be able to do. They also did this in logistics. Uh, I had tenured people saying to me that it took them forever to get a daytime route. And I'm thinking, why would that be? The tenured people have the most experience. They're making the most money. They're the people that a manager can depend on because they know the job. They have been trained. They have experience. They have been here. So why would I put a brand new person on my most difficult route? How does that make sense? But that is what they are doing. Now, I can't tell you about Texas because, number one, in Texas, you ain't going to make no money. That's number one. Number two is no, I, I got to say, there was some, some, some shenanigans going on in Texas, but nothing like up here in Washington. I've, I've never seen anything like it up here. Now, there were pockets where there was stuff going on, like at Arthur Anderson. That's why they lost their license in the whole state of Texas to do accounting. And I knew that there was a problem at Arthur Anderson because I was over at PwC and met an executive assistant over at Arthur Anderson. And when I went over there, those executive assistants were wearing flip-flops. Now, true enough, it's Texas, it's Houston, it is hot. But in the accounting firms, accounting industry, you're going to not be wearing flip-flops at all. There's no place at all where it is acceptable to wear flip-flops. Just like if you walked into your bank and you saw the, the branch manager or the teller Walk through in some flip-flops. What you think about that bank? Can you trust these people with your money? Meanwhile, Arthur Anderson is, uh, is signing billion-dollar auditing contracts 
with major companies, Fortune 500 companies, and the executive assistant is walking around in flip-flops. Again, I've said this before, if you've seen my videos before, do your research. Do your research. Go to that website. Look on their about page. Check out who their staff are. These are the people that are representing this company. Look at them. And be very judgmental. Be very critical, very judgmental. You're not going to have an open mind. You're not going to look at it like, oh, well, you know, maybe, but, 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 no, no excuses, just black and white. Black and white. Business is business, okay? Business is business. Let me tell you something. I was watching them grill this uh, postmaster. And they were like, how much is a, uh, if I wanted to send a postcard, how much would that cost? I don't know. So that tells you, he doesn't even have as much knowledge as his own PSC has in every postal office. The PSCs are the ones who do the customer service when you come up to the desk. They've got to know how much anything is. A number 10 business letter, how many stamps you need. A postcard, you can't put anything in there, so the weight is always going to be the same. <laughs> There's a flat rate. It's not rocket science. You don't have to weigh anything. Um, you don't have to insure a postcard to mail it off. And the postmaster general for the whole shebang bang doesn't know the price. I had to turn it off. I had to turn it off, honey. So guess what the morale is? If your boss's 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 boss doesn't even know your job, I'm going to leave it right there. I don't know what kind of interview he had. I don't know who hired him. I don't know. But I'm just saying. So it says, DeJoy is being accused of ignoring the panel's demand for documents related to Postal Service mail delays and contacts with the White House officials or the Trump campaign. Chairwoman Carolyn Maloney, she's a Democrat from New York, indicated Monday that DeJoy had refused to comply with the request for documents she issued during his testimony to the committee last week when she first made her subpoena threat. The panel is seeking details on changes to USPS overtime policy, sorting machines, and general delays in mail service, which they warn will undermine mail-in voting across the country. Okay, here's where the breakdown is happening. When the mail comes through, they have this process now where they're scanning everything, right? The problem is, is that the scanner doesn't normally scan everything. It's not fail safe. Okay, so that's number one with incoming mail. Number two, once the mail is sorted and it is into the truck, they scan it into the truck. It's out for delivery. Okay. Once that is happening, uh, a tenured postal letter carrier. He knows the route. He can look at the mail and pretty much know whether this is a lock and loop. What that is, is a route where you park your truck, you get your mail bag out, and you lock that truck up and you go door to door to door. Door to door to door. 
Normally you go up this side of the street, cross over, and come back down. That's a lock and loop route. It's mostly walking. Okay. A tenured male person, letter carrier, will know that. How they need to have everything organized and laid out for to deliver efficiently this route. A newbie doesn't know. A newbie doesn't know that this here route is partially lock and loop, and then you've got apartments. So most apartments, mail mailboxes for the residents are by the leasing office, by the management office. Some are not. A tenured person will know. A newbie will have to hunt it down because they don't know. If you try to call in to the postal master, they will normally not answer your call. Even though they have four cell phones. I've seen four. Where the postmaster will have four cell phones. And you will call each one of those numbers and they won't pick up on any of them. Because you're a newbie. I guarantee you, they don't have your name and number saved into their phone under contacts and as a new letter carrier. They don't bother because you may quit. And I almost want to say that that's the reason why they overload the newbies. To make them quit. Or to hurt them. Your feet are going to be hurt. Your back. You're, you're going to get dinged up. You may have to run from a dog or two. I had I, so many incidents of that happen. They give you the dog spray and all of that. But again, when you are new and you are out there by yourself, you don't know what you have to deal with. They give you one day where you follow uh, a letter carrier, a tenured letter carrier. The postmaster will set you up with a tenured one. And they are supposed to set you up with a tenured one who has a route that's similar to the one that you are going to be receiving. But generally, they will put you with someone nowadays. And if you're with Yolanda, she will put you with someone who is, number one, a person she don't like. A person who's always in trouble. Because she wants you to be trained incorrectly. It is what it is. It is what it is. Don't say I didn't tell you. Don't say I didn't tell you. But that's this man. He's the boss's 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 boss. And, and I wish somebody could have told me what I'm telling you now. This thing is going to blow wide open when November hits with this election. And it's only going to have a problem in other places. And I'm going to tell you how. Where I live, they're so used to the Postal Service being jacked up that in order to vote, you do not have to use the Postal Service. They have their own boxes. They have their own people that goes to pick up the ballots. They do not leave it up to the Postal Service. Okay? Because it is not uh, brand new news that the Postal Service sucks. This is, this is old news. Okay. And if you didn't know, now you know. And I told you so. Okay. Leave your comments below. Like, share, like, and share this video. <laughs> I'll talk to y'all later. Oh. Oops, oops. <laughs> Bye.